Hello and welcome to the Groundhopper's Guide number five on the uh, Arn and Eddie network. <laughs> welcome uh, again, Mike Kilby. Hello. My guest at this time. Um, I'm always I, the guest. It's my show. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. We um, we have been to more grounds, so the number's gone up. Uh, mine slightly, Mike slightly more because he's been in Germany. Yes, 29. Um, I'm getting so better at pointing now. Yeah, yeah, when you know where it is, it's uh, yeah. it makes it a bit easier. It's like it's here. <laughs> Look at that, <laughs> like a pro. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the the games that we've been to. I've basically been to like two games, and Mike's been to three, so that <laughs> shouldn't take quite as long as last time. Well, we we'd been yeah. to like twenty we, games. We were trying to round up two months worth of business at the last one. So yeah, it's it's a lot less. Um, to go through this month there's a, lot, there's a lot less to talk about so we, we should be doing a lot quicker um so we're, we're going to start with charlton which um i went to uh two, like, two, not but, last weekend the weekend before yeah two weeks ago um I, I fancied a little trip down to to london and uh lewis uh friend friend of the show was available so um we popped on down to the valley. Uh, he'd been there before in the away end as a Cardiff supporter, <laughs> and he said it like the away end is a bit rough, it's a bit <laughs> rubbish, and I could see that because, like, when you're inside the ground, <clears throat> I'll uh, I'll just pop up the uh, the ground. There's a lot of police. Is oh. my big one of my biggest early takes from Charlton is there were just police everywhere. Like I got out the station, there were four riot vans opposite the. Sorry, so who 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 were they playing? Doncaster. Donk. Oh, okay. It didn't feel yeah. like it was like heated. It well, it kind of did because there was one bloke who um. Charlton rivalry. I yeah, I don't think there is, but uh, yeah, there was a lot of cops, a lot of mounted divisions, which I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, <clears throat> So yeah, that's that's the big badge. Uh, it's also our background this week. Yeah, lovely big badge. Charlton big badge. Got got the mascots in as well. So what are those lovely mascots' his names? Uh, that gentleman on the left there is Floyd. Floyd. Floyd the and bulldog. Floyd the bulldog who likes to chase around uh, Fulham's mascot probably. <laughs> and um, Harvey, which is the the cat. And I misread that as as Harley. I think looks looks a bit more like a Harley to me. Yeah, Doesn't so it's Harvey. Like Harley. Harvey, yeah. Harvey, okay. Is that I'm not going to. Is it a male and female thing going on, or I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm not going to assume the genders. It's fair enough. So that's that's what's going on there, and we're in the Alan Kirbishley stand. Ah, oh, cracking. That's a, that's a stand. I'm thrilled to be in the Alan Kirby. I love Alan Kirbishly. Like, um, it's, yeah, only basically a temporary, a... it's only a temporary stand, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, yeah, West Ham will turn up and knock it down, but then he'll sue him anyway. So, uh, as long as he gets his money. Uh, and that's the, the back of it. The, uh, I thought you quite like this ground because it's, it's just, it's a little bit wonky. It's a yep. little bit odd. So, there's like a big slope kind of going up to the, the back of the ground. And if you come in from the other side, uh, you can see like over the ground. Okay, awesome. As you're coming in and there's steps down to it. Um, I don't know how to get to that part, but like <laughs> I've seen pictures of it. It looks cool. Um, one, one to try on on a non-match day, maybe. Yeah, maybe have a look around. But uh, yeah, there's some really nice pictures of the ground from, from different angles. Um, so we're in this end. Um, there's like a row of um vendors like built into the outer wall of the stadium and the concourse is outside okay which well, so, to be fair, walsall was kind of the same for that though because they had all the food stuff on the outside rather than yeah the yeah but theirs was more um it was like built it, it felt like it had been just chucked there afterwards whereas this is it's actually built into the walls okay okay so that, that was interesting to me. The um these steps on the left go up to the executive boxes. Oh, okay. The prawn Fancy. sandwich brigade. Yeah, oh yes. Although one of the boxes had Hayden written on the front of it. It said Hayden's box. 
as in the Womble, as in the Womble, as in the Womble, Womble, Womble from from Wimbledon. Possibly. Uh, so here's the Jimmy Seed stand. This is the away end. Jimmy Lewis, Seed. This is the stand that Lewis had been in before. And if you look at that, and you yeah. look at every other stand they've got, the away end is clearly the ropiest stand in the in the ground. Yeah, that's obviously the original distance. one. Yeah, it's the oldest one, and it's it's looking a bit rough. It's got a block of flats behind it with some geezers out in his balcony there watching the game, having a lovely <laughs> time. And then you've got this this big lad over the way here, okay. uh, which is the West Stand, which I couldn't even get it all into the picture because of the I was trying to get in the, the top because it says Charlton Athletic along the top, and then it's got like the badge uh, in the middle. I just thought that was really cool, so I was, I was trying to get a decent picture of it. And they had a lot of nice little features in the corners as well. So you've got the, uh, my desire is always to be found at, at Valley Floyd Road up in that one corner there. Uh, they had lads out with flags down the side. This is proper sports photography, by the way. Look at the yeah, like capture on that one. It yeah, took me four attempts. And yeah, there's the ground. So that there's the ground from where we were sat. So it's, you can see it's like it's a proper decent. This is a championship level ground, it's pushing Premier League, I would say. Well, Apart from the Jimmy C stand, which is rough. I remember you said said to me uh, when you said you'd been to Cheltenham, and you said it was like a a mini Old Trafford, and I kind of get the vibe of if they was filming a <clears throat> if they was filming a television program and they were setting it in Old Trafford, but they couldn't. Hatch they couldn't afford Old Trafford. Yeah. They would use the Valley Parade, and that's not the Valley Parade. That's Bradford. Yeah, um, the they would use the Valley um, instead. Yeah, it's 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 a very nice looking ground. Somehow one I've never done really in London, um, considering I... Luton and Charlton have been in the same place quite. A lot, <coughs> yeah, maybe one for when they do go up. I, I would heartily recommend it. Though it's a really good ground. Uh, the support was terrific. Although. Like it was a great atmosphere. It probably helped that they absolutely smacked Doncaster, who couldn't defend at all. And if it wasn't for their goalkeeper, who's on loan from Watford, uh, uh, Dahlberg is it? I think is their keeper. That's like if it wasn't if it wasn't for him, they'd, they'd have had an absolute hiding. And that, they did all right. It was four nil, but it could have been seven eight nil easy, easy. Doncaster, as soon as they went behind, heads down, the game was over. Donning um, not doing too well at all, by all accounts. No. And you can see why. I mean, tactically, they're inept. Um, they've got a lot of really talented forward players who don't really want to work that hard. It's a little bit like Man United. Uh, pl playing like a team managed by Nigel Clough. <laughs> well, they're managed by Richie Wellens, and he's just as bad. Um, there's Hayden's box. Oh, OK. Just up behind the... Uh... It's up there. I actually don't know if it is Hayden because I can't see the first letter, but I assume it's Hayden. Yeah, it could be it could be Caden or another, any other names, but yeah. I I'm, I like to think that it's Hayden. Yeah, right? Hayden. And uh, I just want to show you the, what, the this is the the home end. Um, so it was okay. it was pretty full. I think they had about fourteen thousand there. Okay, so that's which is that's a it's decent a decent for... that's decent for League One, and well, this whole not end a glamour. Here, it's not a I say there are glamorous ties in League One, and you, you, a team like a Portsmouth or a Sunderland or something like that is obviously one of the glamorous games. Yeah, and Sheffield Wednesday. Doncaster probably isn't one of them. No, just not really. I mean, they, they were in the Championship not that yeah. long ago, but they're not anywhere near the top of the league. And this is basically, I think they both started the day in the bottom four, okay. and by the end of it, it was pretty clear which one of them was going to stay in the bottom four. And Charlton were are not in the; they're in a false position. They sat the manager. Um, yeah, the, the guy they've got in now, though, is um, I can't, Josh, uh, look up, but Johnny I can't Jackson. Remember. Yeah, Johnny Jackson, by all accounts, the fans absolutely love him to bits, and he's apparently uh, they had a decent performance just before, um, in the week following because I remember yeah, I think, on the radio, but yeah, I think they won at Sunderland the week before yeah. that. Um, I'm trying to remember the last manager, uh, Nigel Adkins got um, got the sack. Nigel and Lee Bowyer was it before that? I think? Lee Bowyer before, but Lee yeah. Bowyer left. Um, yeah. He left to go to Blues uh, like yeah. last season. But no, it, it looks good for him. In all honesty, it looks good for him. There's Charlton. It's a great ground. They've got great fans, and they seem to be on the up and up with the new yeah. manager. And it's it's a team which historically has always been championship or well sorry uh, yeah championship or league one sort of level so i think 
they're kind of just a ready-made team for that sort of level and yeah, they should, they should definitely be in the championship. They can compete yeah. at that level, certainly, or they should at least be in the conversation for promotion. So, yeah, yeah, they should be one at least. If they're not in the championship, they should be at least one of the teams that goes up every couple of years, um, <laughs> like Rotherham, who for some reason go to the championship quite a lot. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can't comment on Rotherham. I've never been there. So. Yeah, but um, and neither have I. But they come to the champ. They're in the. They may even be in the championship right now. Sh- who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly couldn't tell you if they were or they weren't. But um, yeah, it's like they're one of them teams that should really be in that conversation a bit more often. Okay, so, so that basically that's it. That's all that I did uh, since the last time. I uh, yeah. had a really nice time. Um, cheers to Lewis for uh, for the company. We, we had a nice day out. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be over to you then, Mike, and your so, little uh, trip to Berlin. Yeah, so whilst... whilst um, actually whilst uh you was at Cheltenham Athletic I was over in Charlottenburg uh that's where I was staying in Berlin uh so actually not too different and actually I think my game kicked off before your one with the time difference so uh we've gone a bit out of sync but um oh, no. so on, on Saturday the 30th um I went to uh one of actually a ground that's kind of always been on my um sort of bucket list and I never thought I would actually get to do it uh, for a number of reasons, but I was at the Friedrich Ludwig Jan Sport Park in um, in Prenzlauer Berg in Berlin, um, which is was ho- is home currently to the uh, Victoria Berlin, Victoria eighteen ninety nine Berlin, who are playing in the uh, th- third league in Germany, so the third the, th- the bottom national level league in Germany. Um, uh, the Ludwig Jan is basically uh, is Berlin's third largest ground after um, the Olympia Stadion and um, Union Berlin's Alte Ferrasti. First Array, sorry. Um, and you could mispronounce it all you like. Yeah. I want to have a clue if you're saying it wrong. That was a terrible. Not. I'm really embarrassed at how I did that. Though. Um, <laughs> the, um, the the German lads watching will be like uh, yeah, on your case, screaming, but... screaming at me. Um, so. Yeah, Ludwig Jan um, is a ground which is actually set for demolition. Um, oh, nice. Quite literally for set for the demolition. It's an old, big old East German ground. Um, it was one of the big grounds during the DDR uh, period. Um, it's part of the, the, the wider sport park is part of... Um, Berlin is set to host the... I believe it's the Special Olympics very soon. And the Ludwig Jan is effectively going to be the centre central stadium for the special olympics when it comes and as i say look at that what a fantastic view um it's probably one of the best i think one of the best views in in football i've had anyway um right in the east of berlin um but it's the problem is it's very in um not inaccessible what's the word it's it's just not an accessible stadium um in terms of disability and for the special olympics that's obviously a (laughs) uh an important part of it um, like a lot of grounds at its level, it's a um, it's got an athletics track around the outside, mm. um, which I'll be honest, I, I can I can give or I can I can take or leave really. It doesn't bother me as much as it much as it bothers some people. Um, I think you can have good and bad athletics yeah. tracks. Like the Definitely. some of them, the way that they're designed, it's like you can be in the front and you're miles away from the pitch still. That Definitely. doesn't look that bad. The the uh, the thing to remember on athletic stadiums, and I always forget, is uh, grounds with athletics tracks. Sorry, my apologies. Is um, I I am always I've always preferred to be behind the goal. Um, but then when you're at when you watch a great a gown a great, uh, when you watch a game at a athletics uh, track with an athletics track on it, you are about three three miles away from the goal, <laughs> and you forget. So uh, for the first half, I sat behind the goal and I realised I'm not seeing any of this game. Um, and I uh, decided to walk over to the... Because uh, it's quite an open ground. Uh, you can probably go down a little bit more. That's me with a beer. Because <laughs> hey. it's Germany, I can have a beer at the football. Oh, there's, there's David Hasselhoff. There's David Hasselhoff. Um, yep, yeah, so I decided to move over to the... <laughs> <laughs> we we, we can see the... Uh... The stadium yeah, so in the that's, background that's there, the, behind that's from the side. 
Um, I decided to go over to the side but for the second half. What is it with Germans and the whole sausage to bun ratio being off? The thing is, I I would prefer. Okay, we're going on to the sausage. Um, <laughs> I, pref I prefer actually the sausage being bigger than the bun because really you need something to hold. And the, the, I think we have this ratio wrong because we have a, we, you get a hot dog at a football game over here or a sausage in a roll. And it's just all bread and then like this thin bloody sausage in the middle. Which this is great. There's sausage at the end, sausage in sausage at either end, which you eat first, and then you I feel like roll. if you get it right, then yeah. it's it's like that, but it's just a little bit tighter in. Yeah. I'll have to dig out the photo of the of the sausage from Fortuna Dusseldorf because that was much more impressive because that was about this long. Oh, that was massive, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, that was this long. And also the bread roll was about this big. So not <laughs> uh, there might be some better pictures. Um inexplicably, um Alan, a uh, friend of the show, Alan, who's uh, one of our wrestling uh, people people we know from WXW and I Ireland, he was at the he was at the match um with his friend Mike, who's a top lad. And uh, so that was a bit of an unexpected thing. We, we only realised we was going to the same game the night before. Um, <laughs> so that was kind of an unexpected uh, result. But it was nice to sort of do a ground hop with. I, I do like the, the ground hopping thing of like you run into other people doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was that was a. Uh, that that was kind of an unexpected thing. Um, the only unfortunate thing really was it was um, it was against Borussia Dortmund two, uh, which meant you know, five surely. Yeah, whatever reserve. <laughs> I, I prefer the word reserves, frankly, but it's Dortmund two should we say? And um, uh, there were a, quite a few Dortmund fans there. Um, I think they must sort of be Dortmund fans that live in Berlin because I assume there would be a lot. Um, and they were a little bit vocal, but you, you really lacked, it really lacked a um, a sort of bit of bite really in the fixture, especially if it had been, for example, Victoria Berlin versus a Eintracht Braunschweig or something from the third division, you know, I think it would have been a lot more of a tastier fixture, but um, I think uh, Victoria, ended up, I think they won three one again. I can't remember the result now, but uh, yeah, Victoria played them off the park because, as I say, a lot of the Dortmund players, although technically very impressive, they're not really at first team sort of level. Um, there was a one. There was a gentleman called I can't remember his first name, but it was his surname was Taz, and he 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 was the scorer for um, Dortmund in one of their goals, and um, that was a. He was quite impressive, but I can't really... It's probably one of them teams that I'll look back in about three years' time and I was like, well, he's 70 million pounds, 70 million euros. He's yeah, 35 yeah. million. So there is an element of that. I was going to um, say I felt that way about Charlton's... Uh, not Charlton. Um, uh, Doncaster's loan players because they've got like a, uh, several loan players from, from the top divisions like um, yeah. uh, Watford's keeper. And they've got Ethan Galbraith who's on loan from Man United. So I've seen him play twice already this season for, ah. for two different teams. Well, but, uh, uh, he's, know, we, he's a class player, except they we, played him at right back in the second half. We'll, we'll see George Miller as England's uh, striker soon. So the uh, the Walsall player, he'll be he'll be playing for England soon, as long as he's English. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that that was that was Victoria, and um, I I loved the ground. Um, and unfortunately, probably unless you go this season, it's unlikely it's unlikely you'll probably get to go to that ground. Um, if you can get out there before the end of the year, I would definitely say it's worth it just to say you've been there because it's historically a. Um, I actually bought a print of it, um, but it's downstairs, so I don't have it with me. Uh, I did buy a print of the ground because it is a it's such a classic ground, and if if you just look at it on Google Maps or many hundred photos of hundreds of photos of it on online it's it's a really cool ground you can feel you can feel um you could drop that you could close your eyes and open them and you could feel like you're in anywhere in the eastern block it was it's a really cool sort of um 
feeling around that, the ground. That's the thing about Berlin is it's got that split where like half of yeah. the city's like really like westernized and modern, and half of the city's still a little bit. And you know, you immediately know what side of the city you're on. It's there's no there's no fudging. Well, there's a little bit in the middle where it's a bit fudged where the property was bought up very quickly. But um, yeah, it's you you can immediately tell what side you're on, and it's it's so um, it's so evident, especially with the Ludwig Jan. So I'd say definitely worth a visit. Um, quick thing on Victoria before I go on to the next one. Okay. There's only one more. Uh, like so, Victoria is probably at this point Berlin's third club, at least in terms of the um, position in the league. Um, but I would argue probably the two other because they're in the third division. There's a lot of teams at Re uh, Regionalliga Nord Ost level, which is basically holds Berlin, all the Berlin teams, and most of the former East Germany. That's the regional league that they're, they, they're mainly in. And there's a lot of Berlin teams in that league. And I would argue quite a few of them are probably bigger, at least in stature, than uh, Victoria. But they've had a... I think they've had a... Uh, they, like a lot of Berlin clubs, they've had a bit of investment from a generous um, a ger generous owner and um, they've managed to propel themselves into the, the third division. But... Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's definitely uh, if you can get there, get there. But um, I doubt you'll get there after this year. So, so uh, the day after that, and also on the Wednesday because I liked it so much, I went to the Monzen Stadion, uh, which is home of um, Tennis Borussia, uh, Tennis Borussia Berlin, who are the super cool left wing club in Berlin. I'd probably say the the definitely the cool kids in in uh, Berlin there's not a uh, I think uh, they're over in West Berlin uh, they're fully West Berlin they're just they're in a part of town called West West End uh, which is not far from not far from the Olympia Stadion really it's it's kind of it's within walking distance so the, the coloring on the posts here is this club colors or is yes. this just so um oh, cool. Tebe are called a uh, nickname Lila Weisse, which is uh, purple and white um and purple and white is a very uh, common thing so you'll see it again here um that's just the colors of the team i think they've always been that color um also the the name itself a bit of a strange thing tennis borussia um like a lot yeah. of german sports clubs they formed from departments of they're formed from departments of this is the football department of tennis Borussia. It was originally a tennis and ping pong club back in the <laughs> 1900s, uh, which then, and then obviously te the football team became the uh, popular one. Um, so yeah, Momsen Stadion, um, it's another athletics track uh, ground. And um, the opponent in this one was, let's see, this was the game that was like, yes, I need to get to, because this was a bit of a tasty derby, really. So this was Tebe versus uh, BFC Dynamo, who actually yeah. quite recently yeah. played in the Friedrich Ludwig Jan. Um, so they, they, played in the, they played in there quite recently and then moved out to um, Hoxenhausen, which is in northeast of Berlin. Um, and kind of the historical context of it is, well, and current context. So Tebe is a very... Um, very cool, trendy, inclusive West Berlin club uh, would have been playing. They played in the Bundesliga in the seventies, I believe. Um, whereas BFC Dynamo um, is the former is the former um, club. Well, uh, I think ten times DDR champions. They won the they won the East German division many many times. Um, former club of the Stasi, basically the works club of the Stasi in Berlin. Um, nowadays, they have a bit more of a um, right-wing element. Um, some people call it, it's kind of... I think some people do consider it a Nazi club. Uh, I think it's quite widely renowned for that, unfortunately. Obviously, it's not everybody, but there, um, Alan and Mike were in that, that game, that ground. They were in the away end for that game for some reason and the person who did the uh, checking of the tickets in that end who was a from dinamo 
he had quite a distinctive a uh, sun tattoo on the, on on his skull, um, <laughs> which is yeah, not the most thing. <clears throat> There's a lot of there was a lot of Lonsdale Jack, uh, Lonsdale hoodies. That's all I'll say um, about uh, about that. Um, but it was unlike unlike um, Victoria's crowd. This crowd was quite lively. Um, Teve had um, you know it's all about the purple flags uh, on the on the opening whistle. There was a they they threw up this purple confetti. Which rained down, which I think I've got a photo of there. Yeah, yeah. They, threw down, they threw down this purple confetti, which looked amazing, and it was like, what, was that all the fans just chucked it in the air? Is that the? Yeah. So it's on. It, it was on the. There was a bloke walking round, and um, there was a, yeah, there was a bloke walking round from I think one of the fan club things, and he just basically gave everybody a handful, of, <laughs> handful of confetti, and it was, and it was, and then it was like, the the opening whistle went off, and they just went, Wah! everyone just went like that. So. Oh, it was cool. awesome. Um, I did what because I saw the picture and I was like, I have no idea what's happening here. I'll ask you about it on the on here. Yeah, so. yeah. It's um, it was and hey, that's probably one of the most Instagrammable photos of a football game I've taken ever. So, oh yeah, um, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like, and I think there's one in my beer as well. Yeah, there he is. Uh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> uh, again, more beer at the football because you can. Um, I love that. That's coming soon in England, hopefully. So, um, um, so you, this was Regional Liga uh, level. So uh, this is fourth tier uh, football, and I'll be honest: the, the the quality of fourth tier football in Germany compared to fourth tier football in England is a lot. is very pronounced. It's very different. Um, the 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 standard the standard is. I don't think you're going for the football, really. If you're going to a team like Tebe, you're going for a team like uh, Dynamo. You're going for the the atmosphere, the feeling of being in a club. Um, yeah, it was a. You just trying to say the game was rotten. Then. <laughs> the game was kind of rotten. It was a one nil win for Dynamo, which was yeah, it was what it was. Um, the ground itself, um, big con. It was a big. Uh, I've not really got any better photos. I should have really sent you some more, but uh, like like Friedrich Lugersvan, it was a it's an athletics ground, and it's a concrete concrete. Um, what would you call it? Uh, steps are basically around the outside of it. Um, so terracing. Concrete, terrac concrete terracing, <laughs> should I say? My apologies. Um, which is which is fine. It was it's a um, great big scoreboard, which unfortunately was not working. Uh, and then on huh. one side of the pitch, there was a there's a great big stand as well, which was you could we sort of looked out over, and um, big stand on the right there. Yeah, that big, yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, that's the one. Um, but it was quite good because there were fans up in that as well. So during the game, the fans would sing half of the song to the other stand, and the other stand would sing it back mm. and things like that. Um, and, I love that sort uh, of thing. Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. Really creative, um, really creative with their chance. Um, there was the on the uh, Wednesday night because I did go back on the on the Wednesday to watch watch the watch the team again because uh, I just really enjoyed it. Uh, and it was also a night game, so it was a bit more exciting. On the Wednesday night, they had a song which was the tune of um, the police's illegal alien. Which was it went on some I can't remember the exact words, but it was like, oh, I'm an alien watching tennis in a football pitch, and it was like, yeah, it was, <laughs> I can't remember, the, I can't remember the exact words, but it was dead funny. It was really creative because I've never heard that song be used for a chant before, and like, yeah, it was just every single they there was, they had about, I genuinely think they had about thirty songs that they sung during the game. Um, I've and, got the. Um... The, the night, yeah, that's the night uh, pictures as well. Um, uh, and actually, uh, there, there should be a picture in a second, but it was a um, so this game was against Tasmania Berlin, who actually hold the record for being the worst Bundesliga team of all time. Uh, there's an interesting story on that, which you could you could certainly read about. Oh, there's the um, scoreboard, yeah, that's the lovely store in scoreboard. the background. There. Um, it really yeah. is very far be between the goal and the fence. And being behind the goal, yeah. And I realize that is that. really far. Yeah. 
But I think yeah. that photo shows you how far it is compared to the corner. Like if you're I down mean, here and you yeah. buy the corner, that's not that far away, but that is a that is a proper and one thing I would trip. say about Momsen Stadion is Momsen Stadion does not have a full size athletics track. A full size athletics track like at Ludwig Young is eight lanes and that's only six, I think. So it's even bigger at for Ludwig Young. So mm. it's it it I quite I like it, but it's it's I don't I don't dislike it hugely, but um it's it's all right. Um so before this before this um before this game, instead of having confetti being a night game, uh, we had sparklers. Um, oh yes, yeah, I can find that. that. There's the picture. It looks like flares, but it's a lot friendlier. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for you to do that. Yeah, um, yeah. So another incredibly Instagrammable photograph for for me there. Um, have you even got the gram? <laughs> I do have the Instagram. I put pictures of all of the grounds I go to, which you should oh, okay. definitely follow me on there. So, um, um, there was at uh, Tebe was a lot better on the Wednesday evening. Um, they, but it was still a nil nil um, in the end. But there was also like a massive fight <laughs> for some reason. Somebody got sent off, and then there was a massive fight, and then one of their players got sent off. So it ended up being twenty men in the end of the pitch. It was like a bench clearing fight. I don't really know what happened, but it was a bit of a wow. uh, yeah. So I went to two games, never saw Tebe score once, <laughs> um, which was unfortunate. That's impressive. Um, the, the one thing I would just want to quickly bring back about back to the uh, Dynamo uh, Dynamo and Tebe game was that yeah, um, and also slightly I'm not going to go into detail with it, but um, I also went to the Ice Bar and Ice Hockey Team, which is. Burning. I'm just going to so put the like, picture of you your scarf yeah. up because it's. Uh, I have got my scarf over there, but it's over there, just behind <laughs> the screen, so I can't get it. Um, the um, the Ice Bar and Hockey Team is effectively uh, yeah, it's Berlin's team in the DEL and they play in the Mercedes Benz Arena which is in East Berlin as well and that formerly was part of Dynamo as well so people who people who there there's there's definitely a gener there's definitely a split of people between I the phrase I used quite a lot to one was this the wall still exists in their skulls <laughs> in the sense that <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of East yeah. German pride there's a lot of East Berlin pride in that and i kind of like that even though it's kind of something to kind of take the mick out so all of like all of a lot of dinamo's chants um which i think would be very famous if you're from berlin because you would have heard them all the time but um there's a lot of but uh, chants which would be like um they would take they would take like some of tebe's chants so there was one where we table would go like lila weiser lila weiser and um Dino would go like Lee Le Weiser, Ost Berlin is scheiße. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, West Berlin is scheiße. Sorry, yeah, yeah. So it's like it's always it was like um, Dynamo was always chanting about West Berlin and going to the um, going to the ice hockey games. There was a generational split where there was a lot of people who were a lot of the hardcore like ice bar and hockey fans were dynamo they actually were supporting dynamo because they used to be dynamo before i think they kind of it got bought out and they changed it um so a lot of the chants are all dynamo dynamo they're, they're dynamo based chants and in if you go into the um merchandise stands it's all dynamo berlin you can basically half of the half of the merchandise stand is ice bar and stuff and the other half is dynamo so you can still buy basically what the old club was um, stands, and it's it's there's a there's a there's a cultural there's definitely a cultural pride in being from East Berlin, which I hadn't picked up as much before I started going to sport in Berlin. Having mm. been a few times, it's the it's the first time I've really seen it pronounced the way it was. Um, so for me, like it was, I would definitely say. A lot of people have kind of said Berlin is not a football city because Hertha is not very good. Um, I've not been to Union. I've been to the Olympic Stadium. I've not been to Union. I was planning to go to their Europa game, Europa Conference League game against uh, Feyenoord, but unfortunately, Feyenoord being Feyenoord meant that they weren't selling tickets on general sale. Yeah, the, the, there was trouble at that game, wasn't yeah. there? 
Yeah, and actually, there was trouble in the centre of Berlin hours for hours beforehand and afterwards. It was not a really. It was a bit leery in town, is what I would describe as. It was just a bit leery. Um, but yeah, a lot of people say Berlin is not a football city like Munich, um, like the the Ruhrpott or London or Glasgow. But I, having gone to see two, well, three, well, sorry, four, because I saw Tasmania as well. Having seen four of their smaller teams, it's there's such a li- the li- there's such a liveliness about the 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 teams like the, there's. I would. I think there's there's something like sixty teams in Berlin, and if you go on Footballogy, if you have the app, if you if you pop your pin in Berlin on Saturday or Sunday this weekend, there's there's thirty games going on, and there's there's like you know there's famous there's teams like Hertha with an Union, you've got Tabor, you've got Dynamo, Victoria, you've got Tasmania, you've got you've got like ethnic clubs, so you've got things like Croatia, Berlin. You've got Turkish, Turkish ethnic clubs, and they've all, every single one of these teams, they they, they take the games so bloody seriously, in the sense of like, it's the center of the community for each of the, for each of like the groups. There's like an FC International, which is like for expats, so like for West Westerners, should we say? <laughs> <laughs> like there's like for, for if I say like the Americans and the Brits who live in Berlin, there's and like there's. I've, but that's what I like the most variety. about like certain football clubs is that they have that attachment, they have that community yeah. attachment. That it's the focal point for people. I, I love that. And I think, like Tebe, T- T- I I was sort of telling this to a friend uh, today at work, and um, a lot of clubs in the UK and outside of the UK, but particularly in the UK, they they promote themselves as being inclusive places. All of the Premier League clubs, they put the the rainbow badge on their Twitter when it's that time of the year. They put the no room for racism badge at that time of the year. But Tebe is genuinely, that is a welcoming and open and safe place to be. It's there's 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 no bullshit around that, I think. Sorry for using it. There's there's there's, <laughs> there's, okay. no, there's there's no bullshit around that. It's an incredibly inclusive and welcoming club. There's it was one of the, it's it was a v- incredibly diverse crowd there was there was at no point that there there are there are a club which has a rainbow flag with their badge on it up all year round which is fantastic there were same sex couples in the ground which were open about it which was cool um it's just i don't ever there was people of all all different diversities and you compare it to I think they, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of clubs in the UK which pr- profess to be this, but I don't think they do it. And mm. I think um, for me, that was what I really, really loved about Tebe, really, as a club and as a team, really. Yeah, I think British football, it's not just British football, some mentalities are just kind of stuck in yeah. the 70s and 80s and haven't really moved on from then although the the bulk of people sort of involved in the the football clubs seem to be open to to inclusivity uh, not just because it it increases their gate receipts but um a lot of football supporters are a little bit blinkered yeah definitely to to what a football supporter should be which is sad to me because like a football supporter is somebody who just wants to go and watch football it doesn't matter what else is going on with them is if they want to go watch football they're a supporter so yeah so it shouldn't be a man space no it's a it's an everyone space definitely and um i would say it was a it's it's a it for for a foot for a footballing city fantastic and i would urge you if you have if if you have the inkling or if anything I said like makes you even slightly curious then go mate it's the best it's, it's it was fantastic and the games were like 10 euros at most I think to go to the games and you can have a beer and a big sausage at the ground <laughs> what 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 else what else do you need beer and a big sausage um before we go uh, I'm just going to give you a quick snapshot from uh, Bromsgrove Sporting. Um, this didn't used to be here. 
this Ooh. used to be like and that's a well, terrace it, yeah well no the terrace <laughs> has always been there but the uh the bromsgrove sporting thing written along the back of it it looks pretty cool i think uh they've also uh there's now an outdoor bar uh yeah. so i'm going to regularly be going back to bromsgrove sporting uh because they've got an outdoor bar there we go was it a decent selection um that was like five. you could get Guinness and you could get um so you want uh Sharps uh the yeah, Atlantic Pale Ale. Ale. That's not bad actually. Yeah, so that that was a decent beer to get at a, a football ground. Or you could have Carling, which is the more of a standard beer. But yeah, it was better than than I was expecting. I had a Sharps. It was all right. A lot of Berliner Kindle in in Berlin, um, and. Uh, the other one was Tebe. I think they had a partnership with it. There was a small brewery called Quartier Master. That wasn't very good, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that was that was the beer in Berlin. All right. Okay, uh, that that's it for this one. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, also, we'll be back uh, next time, probably after the weekend of the twentieth of November, because I'm coming down to London. Uh, so we're going to be going to QPR. Going to have to QPR. You're going to be QPR. in the QPR. end. Yeah, what you do are going to be um, loot and ultras in the away end. Um, I'm also going to St Andrews before that and Hereford. And I think we're going to fit in another couple of games. And, well. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely go to a game on the Saturday, so there'll, there'll be something else. And uh, we'll come and uh, talk about that next time. Yeah, we do, yeah. Wonderful. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> Bye until then. Goodbye.